Okay, good evening, everybody. I hope everybody is doing well. Welcome to our Wednesday night training. It's always good to be here. Give it just a minute. I see people checking in and getting into the training. Hey, Tom, how you doing, buddy? Tonight, we are going to be going doing a recap, basically, of the last couple of weeks. We're also going to be looking at a couple of other things uh, that I want to take a look at and, and go over. Um, there's just so much with this beacon technology that's uh, that's going on. It's it's huge, and I mean, that's, uh, big as big as it can be. Let me turn this volume down here. Just checking to make sure. Hey, Mark, how you doing, buddy? And beacon beacons are only going to get bigger, and so it's very important as we continue to train. And go into the systems next week. Next week, we're going to take another step. We will go into UID training next week. I'm going to break up UID training over two weeks, not try to jam so much down your uh, throat at one time. And uh, But we're going to break UID training in half. And the second half of the trainings, I want to go into the platform next week and go in and uh, take a look at setting up different pages for different deployments to broaden your beacon sales, increase your revenues, and um, yeah, happy birthday, Kenny. How you doing, buddy? Increase your revenues and do what we're here to do, and that's uh, that's to make money. So without further ado, it is 8 o'clock, and we're going to get started. Uh, for anyone new that's watching or the, the, those that will watch the preview or, I mean, uh, uh, replay, uh, my name is Carrie Miller, and it's always a pleasure to have you on training. And uh, uh, every single Wednesday night, we meet here and go through training. And tonight, we are going to continue with our beacon training. Uh, we are going to go through a recap, and uh, we, we're hopefully going to be moving to a different a regular webinar platform next week. Um, probably going back to go to webinar and uh, we'll do that tomorrow. Uh, a lot of people actually get to see this training that normally don't watch the trainings, but uh, it's um, we're going to try to get everything back to where it was. Webinar jam just doesn't work for us, and so we're going to go back to a regular webinar system. But my name is Carrie Miller, and I want to welcome you to Wednesday Night Training. Real quick, if you have not joined our Facebook group, join our Facebook group at uh, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash AWS Mastermind. It's a great place to be, great place to uh, get help, great place to communicate with others that are doing the exact same thing that you are. Uh, oops. On. Try to connect to the link. Uh, real quick, just a disclaimer App Wizard Studio nor I cannot guarantee just because you are watching training, you will make any sales, create any traffic, or increase your income. Every person is different and has different work ethics. Real quick, can everybody hear me okay? I uh, got a brand new microphone uh, in just a couple of days ago. Uh, Got rid of the road. I, it just, the road was getting uh, too scratchy for some reason. So got a new microphone and uh, hopefully uh, you guys can hear that much better. Uh, reminder, the beacon is a tool uh, in your toolbox and should be used in conjunction with the tools you currently use. So the beacon isn't the only tool that you should be using. You should be using it in conjunction with the app. And as I was saying, next week we are going to go uh, the second half of the training. We're going to get back into the App Wizard platform because I want you to take a look at how to build these multiple pages to go in and set up these platforms. Real quick, we're just going to do a recap uh, and then we're going to go into some new stuff deployment uh, after we kind of recap. Uh, just a fast, uh, as you all know, Beacon technology is hot. If you haven't figured that out by now, if you haven't started reading and, and understand by now how hot this technology is, 
I mean, this is a multi, multi, multi billion dollar industry that's emerging right before our eyes. And about three weeks ago, uh, Mark had finished the programming on the platform so that our mobile web apps will talk to and, and, and respond to the notifications in the beacons. And with a click of a, a click of a notification, you can literally be in your mobile app or your customer's mobile app, which is what's important. And we're going to talk about uh, this in particular moments, placement. Um, I know a lot of people are going out and they're selling one-offs uh, or placing one beacon in a store. Uh, there's several things that you need to start looking at. Uh, I'm talking with a couple of people that are actually going to come on. I'm going to uh, and do some webinars with us to talk about deployment, some of the platforms that are out there to help you with deployment. And uh, this, this is big business. And the combination of the beacon and the apps and uh, some more technology that Woodrow's working on, even as we speak, uh, is changing the game for AppWizard. Literally changing the game for AppWizard. Um, like I say, just a, a, just a few short weeks ago, Mark finished the programming, the Eddie Stone Beacon going into UIDs next week. And with UIDs, it's, it's going to blow your mind what can be done. The URLs are cool and do a lot of stuff, but the UIDs can, can do even more. Um, uh, and you can do multiple things with the beacons. So that's going to be some really, really, really cool training. But we're going to split that up once again. The reason I'm doing the recap is this is some of the questions last week. And put, start going an hour and a half to, 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 to hour and 15 minutes to hour and a half. I've put too, way too much into training. And so it's kind of hard to, after 30 minutes or 45 minutes, to, to really comprehend what's going on. Uh, one of the questions I had was, uh, Carrie, I don't have a beacon. How can I make this work? You can't without a beacon. Now, you can turn your Android phone into a beacon, eh? and maybe that's where some confusion came in. But we're talking about the little beacons, the red dot beacons, and uh, the X4 beacons, and and the other beacons that are out there that I've had a lot of questions about, can we use those? Absolutely. You're welcome to use any beacon you want. There are a ton. I've got a URL. How do I know if I have Bluetooth on my phone? Uh, just simply go to settings, and there's a little Bluetooth symbol there, and make sure it's turned on. And uh, every phone today has Bluetooth on. You've got Bluetooth. Uh, I receive, but it won't connect. And what this question was averting to is they pulled the beacons out of the box and they wanted it to connect immediately to their, to their mobile app. There's some setup that you have to do. And we're going to go into that setup again here in just a moment. But there are if you have to do receive your beacons, set them up, have to uh, make sure that they're working using, I use a couple of different tools, and we're going to talk about that. Uh, my phone has Google on it, but it doesn't have the Radius Network app. Uh, that's because your phone probably didn't come with the Radius Network app. And you have to download these apps in order to configure your beacons, the physical web app, you need to download that. So you, that's the first thing you need to check. Uh, once you download, once you program your beacons, uh, go into the physical web app, and I'll show you what that looks like here in just a moment. And go into the physical web app and make sure it connects there. You also want to make sure your Bluetooth is on and make sure it connects there. Now, I want everybody to understand, and this was probably, I've been at least six hours today on the phone uh, with a couple who was absolutely adamant that they were going to go out and sell every iPhone owner in the country. And so literally, 
a whole day I've been sent but people how to turn on uh, download Google Chrome on their iPhones and turn on their notifications and where they're set up the widget and the notifications. Yes, these do work with iPhone. Okay, iPhones that have the Google app. Now, a lot of people have Google Chrome on their iPhone. I, for one, do. I'm not a big Safari fan. So I have Google Chrome and I had my widget already there. So when I brought, when I program my app, everything works seamlessly. A lot of people don't use Google Chrome on uh, iPhone. They are within the, what we call the iPhone ecosystem, okay? And really get out system. And because this isn't baked into Safari where it automatically works with the notifications on the phone and it's coming, uh, it really has no choice but to, but to come, uh, you have to do a couple of other things on iPhone iPhone is not really your market, okay? When you're out selling this, <clears throat> iPhone is not the market. The Android market is the market, which is about, I don't know, 65-something percent of the phones out there. And out of that 65%, 40% of them are walking around with Bluetooth already enabled on their phone. See, when you get your phones today, especially the new phones, when you get your phones today, those phones, those Android phones already have Bluetooth turned on. They want it on. They have your notifications turned on. They want it on. Okay. They have Google Chrome on it. It comes with the phone. So what happens is, is people will turn off their notifications. Some people like them. Some people don't. But with this emerging technology, you're going to see more and more people do have it turned on. But most people don't mess with it. And that's 40% of the market. So they're walking around with Bluetooth enabled on their Android phones and it's going to receive the notification. And uh, so that's the way you don't want to go out. And this is what's happening I, just from talking to, to resellers. You don't want to go out and push this as an iPhone app. OK, as an as an iPhone beacon, it does work on iPhone. But if you get in that rut with iPhone people, you're going to lose. Because not have their to work with the Eddie Stone Beacon URL and the Eddie Stone Beacon UID, and if you use the Eddie Stone iBeacon, okay, if you use the iBeacon, uh, you have to have an app that specifically works with the information in that iBeacon. So there's some programming that has to be done. Before I go, does everybody? Um, awesome, Tom. Awesome, buddy. Yeah, that's the reason I put that PDF out there. Does everybody kind of understand where I'm coming from with the iPhone app? I did put a, and I forgot about that. I did put a PDF in the group today, uh, early this morning, uh, how to set up a iPhone, how to set up the notifications and everything. Tom said he's, I'm glad that that happened, but that is in the Facebook group. Programming your Eddie Stone Beacon, and we're just going to go th through this uh, kind of quick. I'm not going to go too quick because this is <laughs> this is the most of the questions that I've had. That's why we're going through this again. You need a beacon, okay? And the beacons from all of these beacons come with configuration apps, okay? They all come with configuration. Right? Uh, you have to have a mobile phone, Android, or iPhone with Bluetooth. A configuration app, web app, if you're using the mobile web app URL, Eddie Stone URL, okay? You have, that's what you have to have. Our mobile web apps now have a secure feature where you can put the HTTPS, the URL has to be secure in order to work with the physical web. And Google has been pushing towards, I don't know how many of you have websites, but Google has been pushing towards the HTTPS to membership sites now because you have to have a user password. Google and Firefox, your site, you're putting a password in here. Uh, and, and that's just the preference of the, the owner of the site. But 
you'll get a notification that says, hey, this may not be a secure site. And obviously it's not because it says it's not. For physical web, you have to have HTTPS. And that's the reason we went to the HTTPS uh, colon forward slash forward slash two tap dot Moby. Okay. This is currently the big we're using now there are many there's many shapes there's many sizes uh it's they go on the web and start looking around tons of beacons this beacon happens to be the rad dot be the rad beacon uh it's an i beacon it's a eddie stone url beacon it's a it's an alt beacon it is created and made by RadiusNetworks.com. Just a little disclaimer. I don't get paid by Radius Network. I don't have anything to do with them other than I speak to Jared on a very frequent occasion that many of you have talked to and uh, who is their support guy. Order my beacons from Radius uh, Networks. One of the reasons I do is they help pave the way for the technology. Okay. So I, I like I like what they do. There are some out there that are a lot neater, but they all do the same thing. Now, one thing I will tell you, and, and this is what uh, we're doing to set these up. We're taking these little beacons right here, and does everybody know what, uh, what's that stuff called? I just, hang on just a second, I'll just send it to a jump buddy. Uh, Velcro. <laughs> I couldn't think. So it's been a long couple of days. The little Velcro tabs, I mean, you can you can get them in March. You can get 45 of them. They're clear. They've got Velcro on both sides. They got little sticky tabs on them. Put wherever you're sticking in at, and, you just, and, it, and it's there. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, not sure. Some people say it's fine. Some people say it's not. So, but uh, anyway, uh, these need to be three meters off the floor. Okay, they need to be in unobstructed areas. So that's about nine feet, about eight to nine feet. So you want to put them up, you know, close to the ceiling. Eight foot, eight foot is normal in in most places in in the uh, U.S. Uh, unless they have higher ceilings, but they need to be a set at about nine feet high. Um, and we're going to talk, that's what we're using for these, these little dot beacons is we're using the, what did I call that stuff? Velcro, the Velcro circles, and we're sticking them on the back of them. And it works really well. Uh, these are configurable. You will need to go to the uh, Google Store, the Play Store, or the um, uh, Apple Store, okay? And you will need to download. You have to have this app on your phone in order to configure these apps from, from Radio Speakers. Now, if you have a contact uh, or some of the other companies out there, you'll download their app in order to configure. You have to download the Rad Beacon Config app. Okay, and then just go in and put in Radius Networks or Rad Beacon Config app, and you're going to be able to download that. Everybody get a pencil real quick. And if you want to pick companies, estimate, uh, Contact IO. I get a lot of training from Contact IO. Uh, very, very good company. Very, very good company. Uh, Radius Networks. Estimote has a great, great training on their site. Uh, so, uh, if, if, if I was going to look at any other two companies, it would be contact and estimate, but go to developers.google.com forward slash beacons. They have all the beacon companies that they have approved that they, they say work well and, 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 and everything connects. Okay. So go to developers.google.com forward slash beacons, and you can click on any of these links and go to their websites. I recommend that you do that anyway uh, for a couple of reasons. I, I, I talked about this last week. It's extremely important, as big as this market is and going to be, that you're extremely well educated on this technology if you're going to sell it. If you're not, forget it. I mean, I, you know, there's no use diving into it. 
I've been in it for eight weeks now, and I learn something new every single day. I eat, sleep, and drink Beacon technology, and I've not scratched the surface. So there's a lot to learn. I will bring you as much as I can, but in an hour's time, it's hard to do that. And with a few Facebook posts today, it's hard to do that. So go to this site, go into these websites and learn every single thing you can. I'm going to go into another website live on this training in a minute. It's one of the sites that I love. I love all their blog posts that I get a lot of information from, and I recommend you do the same thing. Of course, you need your mobile phone, your Android or iPhone, and it has to have Bluetooth enabled. And the configuration app, this is what the configuration app looks like on your phone. It's a little bit different for iPhone than it is for Android, but it does work. Uh, it also works on a tablet and, uh, and a Mac MacBook. All right. So just go down. It's Rad Beacon app for the configuration. They've got two or three apps in there. I recommend that you download them all. Download the Locate app. And what that does is when you walk into your place of business, and you walk in with your sheet, let's say that you've got 10 apps out there. Okay, you can literally walk in there and it will show that all 10 of your apps are working. Uh, maybe one of the apps, the batteries run out or something and it's not working and you, you will know exactly what it is. Okay, when you make your plans, when you put together your entire plan, you need to make sure that you know what the UIDs are. You need to make sure all that stuff is written down so that when you go into this, and they've got 10, 15, 20, 30 of your beacons in there, and you turn on the Locate app, you know exactly which one it is, exactly where you, what you got to do. It either needs to be replaced or taken care of. It's like any other business you have to service. The Rad Beacon app provides the following capabilities. Scan for configurable beacons. Configurable beacons meaning, and, and I've, I get this question almost daily, Carrie, I keep pulling down on it, but I can't find the beacon. That's because you did not put it in configuration mode. And we're going to talk about that in just a moment. Display the settings, update the settings, reset the factory settings, lock the settings, reboot, calibrate for iOS only, and measure proximity for iOS only. And then we have the mobile web app. The mobile web app, and this is probably uh, the second biggest thing that happens, you have to make sure that you change it from one tap dot forward slash whatever the name is to HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash two tap dot. Make sure you put the dot in there. It's got to be exactly like this. Mobi M O B I dot. I'm sorry. M O B I forward slash and the copy code. The copy code is the name of the app. Okay, the name of the app. So this copy code equals this CM here, but you don't want to put the CM in there and you must put the HTTPS literally spent three days with, with someone who forgot to put the dot in there. Okay, they didn't put the dot in there. It wasn't showing up, wasn't showing up, wasn't showing up. And um, it just it, it was the dot in the dot movie. So make sure you check everything. Make sure you bring your apps up. Make sure you do everything that you're supposed to. If you will make you a little sheet on every and go through each step every time, just hang it on your on your computer or hang it somewhere in front of your desk and say, okay, put app in configurable mode. Open up Red Beacon app configuration. Pull down, open app, insert information. And I would definitely make sure it says HTTPS on there. Kind of like I got right down here in red. Okay, let's put it all together here. And we've got our beacon. We've got our app. We've got our configuration app. And I'm going to go through these pictures again. I'm also going to show. It's very important. 99.9% .9 of the time when I'm talking to someone on the phone, these little beacons make a clicking noise every time you touch it. Click, 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 click. Because this right here is metal. As is you're taking this metal and you're pushing the battery that's in there down to make the contact on the bottom. So I can hear the clicking noise when I'm on the phone. And this is what I hear. Click, 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 click. I can't get it. That's because you're turning it on, turning it off, turning it on, turning it off, turning it on, turning. All you have to do is push on it once. 
okay? When you push on it once, it's going to turn green. It's going to turn steady green, all right? When you turn it off, it's going to give a red light. You don't need to push it 20 times. Push it once, it's going to work. Now, uh, Brenda, um, I think her last name is Hammett. I can't remember exactly, but uh, she's in the green. And, um, she was having trouble with one of them staying on. Will Sims was having trouble with one of his staying on. And uh, I don't know if he got a hold of Jared or just figured it out. But if you're having trouble and it's not staying connected, I take the battery out of every one of mine, okay? Because I just want to make sure everything's got a good contact. I, I push down on the little metal thing without the battery in it just to make sure that it's not bent. Maybe it got, you know, tossed around in shipping. Put the battery back in and I turn it on. I've never had trouble with any of my apps. A couple of people have, but I haven't heard of anybody else having that problem. I have the problem where you turn and then maybe 30 minutes later it's off. It's because the battery is probably not making good contact. Simply pull, put the battery back in. Make sure you put it where the little ring is on the bottom. Uh, the flat top, the flat part is up here at top, okay? And when you look at the battery, the little bottom part has a little ring on it, all right? And so it's off. We're going to turn it on, and you're going to hold it down for four seconds. Now, this is something else that happens, and I hear this on the phone. They'll, they'll sit there and push it for four seconds. One, two, click, 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 click it in configuration mode like that. Simply take your finger once it's turned on and hold it down for four seconds, literally, and it will start flashing. You will see the rapid flash. It's usually three or four flashes, okay? Then you're going to come in, and you're going to go to the Rad Beacon app. Now, let me stop right here real quick. Everybody see this app right here, Physical Web, P-H-Y-W-E-B? Can everybody see this on your computer or your phone, wherever you're watching me from? I just want to make sure everybody sees that. Very important part of your testing process when you go to take the test, I mean, when you go to test your app, uh, uh, your beacons to make sure that they are ready to go out on the street. Okay. Yeah. Brenda Hammett. I'm, I'm glad you typed that Brenda. I, I was afraid I was getting your last name wrong, but that was a great help, Brenda. And I, I really appreciate you bringing that up in the group, in the AD, AWS being group. Make sure you download this physical web app. Very, very important for testing your beacons. Extremely important for testing your beacons. If your beacon is on and it's not picking up here, your phone is not picking up the beacon. If, if, you're, if it's picking up here, your phone is picking up the beacon. If it's not picking up in notifications, so now you've got a, a little loop going here. Okay, open the physical web. It's picking up there on my phone. If it's not picking up the phone on the phone, maybe you turned off something like nearby or maybe you turned off location or, or you've turned something off on your phone that keeps you from receiving the notifications. But if it's picking up here, you're good to go. If it's not picking up in your on the notification side of your phone, then there's a it's not a problem with the beacon. There's something not turned on on your phone. So you're simply going to pull this down, okay? And this right here is going to start scanning. This will continue to spin for a little bit. All right, and, and a lot of people say, well, it's found the beacon, but I, it's still looking for something. If you've only got one beacon that, beacon that you're setting up, go ahead and go ahead and click on that. All right, so you've clicked on that. Now, right here, this iBeacon is always on. It's always on. But you have to have something on in order for this to, to configure, in order for this to set up and connect to the beacon. So what you need to do is you need to turn on, okay, the Eddystone URL. Now, if you turn it off, if you try to turn it off, you're going to get this. At least one beacon type must be enabled, okay? Turn on the Eddystone URL and turn off the iBeacon just like that, all right? I'm going to talk about the Google shortener in just a moment. Someone has asked about that. This is the shortener I always use. Okay, this HTTPS GO. And, and I'll show you this in just a moment. What you want to do is take this calibration right here for the Eddystone URL and set it to 60 
six. All right, 66 calibrated power. And these down here are set to three and five already. You do not need to mess with the advertising rate. When we start talking about deployment, we're going to talk a little bit about the, the radiuses and distances. And we went over that in last week's training. We'll go a little bit more into it today. Once you have this set up, go up to actions. All right, go up here to actions, click on actions, and you're going to come over and you're going to go to apply. Don't worry, don't worry about the calibrate there. This is, let me go on over here. Go to apply. This code, everybody, if, if you don't know this, please write this down. Uh, this is another 20 phone calls a week <laughs> asking what the pin is. It's eight zeros. Okay, the pin is eight zeros unless you change it. Now, if you change it and don't remember, I can't help you. But it's eight zeros. Okay, so just type in, hit apply, and your beacon is set. One thing I do, let me take this back, is I go back and I lock it. So once you come out of here, just simply click lock. It's going to lock the beacon. What locking the beacon does? is a is to be completely out of configuration mode and someone else cannot access that from a configuration app so you want to lock it the only way it can go back to configuration mode is if you turn it off turn it back on and reset it all right but you don't want it hanging on the wall and somebody walk in and say oh look at all those beacons up there and they say oh let me reconfigure these real quick you definitely don't want that to happen so always make sure that you lock it. This is what it looks like on an iPhone. This is, I, I put the training in the group today. This is where you see it on an iPhone. It doesn't come up in the other screen. It comes up under the widget screen. This is your widget page, okay? And uh, I showed how to set that up in, in, the, in the group today. Now, this is where, this is what it looks like on an Android phone, regular notification. And it literally, uh, I've got an Android uh, uh, throwaway phone. And this thing, it constantly, I mean, it, it's constantly popping up on my phone. It almost gets annoying to me, but that's because I've got it in the house. But that's what it looks like on an Android phone. This is what it looks like on an Android tablet with Bluetooth. So let's say that you've got these in a coffee shop and a lot of people come with their tablets they're going to get the note this is a bluetooth enabled uh next book all right and as soon as i turn it on you can see i've also got the rad beacon app on there because i sit in my living room and play with these all the time so uh you can put your rad beacon app on your on your um tablet and you can set these up from your tablet if it's bluetooth enabled this one is and every time i turn it on this pops up, all right? What is a URL shortener? Let me go, let me come over here real quick. Uh, let me go into goo.g. And this is Google's shortener, okay? Oh, it's Google's shortener. It is HTTPS. All you have to do is come up and put your URL in here, okay? So let's say it's uh, HTTPS. Can somebody give me an app URL, app URL real quick? Foodchat.mobi. Forward slash, hang on, I got a code right here. Four, four, five, six. And I'm gonna hit shorten URL. And you can see that's my app. Okay, that's that's my app. I'm going to hit, I can come up here. I'm going to copy this. <clears throat> Short URL copied. I'm going to say done. It's added to the tracking down here. You can simply click on that. And you can come in here. And this gives a little bit of data. It doesn't give a lot. It shows the number of clicks, the browser they came from, where they came from, and the country they came from. Very good. It's it's great to use, but this is the shortener that I recommend. I like the Google shortener. I've used it for a long time. Uh, 
I haven't tried it, but I've heard Bitly doesn't work well. The BIT. Uh, Brenda Hammett uses one. I can tell you. Uh, I put her app. I'll tell you a quick story. If you'll remember last week or the week before, she was having trouble with her app, and, the, and it was the battery. And uh, so I put her URL in my app while I was on training, and I tested it. And I forgot I put it in there, and I went to a restaurant in Dallas, and I messaged her the next day, and she got a hit on her app in Dallas, Texas. I hope she didn't sell them an app, and I lost a sale. But if so, good for you. But uh, so uh, that's how you set up the Google shortener, okay? Very simple. It's goo.gl. It's not uh, go dot o o g l it's g o o dot g l i think i said that backwards while ago if i did but that's what it is right there all right very easy to set up it takes literally two seconds and it gives you yes it has to be https for the shortener absolutely absolutely always use https always use okay you don't want anything to go in there and mess up your links. All right. Let's see here. All right, let's talk about the uh, setting up deployment real quick. Deployment meaning when you walk into a business, how are you going to set up? What does in Google, the, the little shorter thing? Uh, not extensive at all. I just went through that. Uh, just pull it up. G-O-O.G-L. Put your app in there. Open it up twice and you'll see. According to Business Insider, 85% of the top 100 U.S.-based retail locations will have beacons installed and running by the end of six. Okay. The total number of beacons estimated to be deployed worldwide by 2020 is currently projected at a staggering 400 million. All right, 400 million. Now, I don't know about you, but I want a small piece of that. I, I want a small piece of that 400 million. But with so many brands, retailers, and venues rushing out to embrace beacons and the proximity benefits that they may provide, a little knowledge can be a very bad thing. To that end, here are five best practices to, to consider when designing and launching your very first Beacon Proximity campaign. Now, I got this information directly from geomarketing.com. Very good website. A lot of exceptional geomarketing.com. Number one, define your goals. Do you really need a Beacon campaign? Beacons may seem cool. They are. And when your customers see them, they think they're cool. A reseller walked into a customer, a potential customer, two days ago. Called me as soon as he walked out. He had his beacon in his pocket. When he walked in, the guy had his phone in his hand. He had an Android phone. He got a notification. The, the, the reseller walked up to the counter and the guy said, is this you? And he opened up his app on his phone and he said, yes, that's me. He said, how did you do that? And he reached in his pocket and he pulled out his beacon. He said, I don't know what you're selling, but I want it. That's how cool it is. I mean, this, these beacons are very, very, very powerful. They're so powerful when people just see it work. They've got to have it. I mean, it's almost it, it, it's almost like a drug. You know, the new the new toy on the street. You know, when the when the Mustangs came out in the '60s, every have one. This is the Mustang of the '60s. Everybody's got to touch it. But before you consider investing in beacon messaging, you need to define your business goals. So when you're talking to your clients, and this this is very all these all day and make some money, but I want to show you a lot of money, okay? I want to show you how to dig, dig down using the mobile app and the texting and how to drive everybody back into those apps, really build up your client's business. 
Some questions to ask before you pull the trigger may be the following. This campaign, of course it will. Why? You're going to drive them into the app. You're going to drive them into the marketing platform, the special sales pages, which bring them back over and over again. Will this campaign increase brand loyalty on existing customers? If you put one of these beacons out by the door, and I recommend you put one outside, on the outside of the door, on the entrance, and I recommend you put post one on the inside of the door as they're walking out the door. So that, number one, the people that are walking by outside get a notification. Now, they may not look at the notification at that very moment. They stop for a minute to eat lunch or whatever they do, and they start looking at their phone. They see that notification, and they open up that notification because the call to action says to open up that notification. That's that's Carrie's shoe shop right down the street. Look, they've got sales going on. Why? Because you broadcast that out as they was walking by the front of your store. Can I use this to cross sell or upsell products? Are there customer service enhancement benefits? Well, the campaign and mobile and social engagement. The power of these beacons coupled with your mobile web app, okay, your client's mobile web app, using retargeting is extremely powerful, especially using the uh, Facebook pixel retargeting driving them uh, back into your local marketing campaigns, okay, that you're doing on Facebook for your clients. Now, when they go by and they get open up your app, they get pixeled. Your, next time they, you're broadcasting out a, an ad, they're seeing that ad on Facebook. Your beacon campaign should ensure your investment drives actionable, measurable results. There's one thing I do not believe in, and it drives me nuttier than anything because I've had people try to do it to me. Sell me something, I never see them again, and it did absolutely nothing for it. And I've been caught in that trap. I've spent thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars thinking that I just bought the best thing in the world, and I never hear from the person again. I don't know how to use it. Do not leave your customers hanging because this beacon technology is around for a long, long time. Mobile marketing is around for a long, long, long time, longer than we're going to be around, okay? Build your business, build your business for today, build it for tomorrow, build it for your kid's future, build it for your grandkid's future. That's how long this technology is going to be around. Number two, accurate messaging. Does your beacon messaging provide value? Campaign to be effective, effective, your messaging must deliver value, relevant and most importantly, timely information. Do not get in this trap of setting up a coupon for this week and you and you don't change out the coupon for next week. Okay, if you set up a coupon page and you've got a beacon in there that's transmitting that URL and you're responsible for going in and making sure that coupon is changed every Monday, make sure the coupon is changed every single Monday. So that person does not want you broadcasting last month's uh, sales. Because when people see that, they will quit looking at your notifications. A good example that meets all three criteria is that provided by the Eddie Stone Beacon Depor Deployment for Portland Transit Authority TriMet. Commuters can receive just in time information on train departures and arrivals at any of 87 light rail stations. You can do that, the, the UID uh, that we're going to go into. You can get into this, right? You can get into this kind of stuff. It's crazy what you're going to be able to get into. This kind of deployment is very ambiguous. If in that it pops up the information via your embedded notification screen on Android and just recently with iOS. Users just need to have Bluetooth turned on and be in the range of the beacons to receive the messaging. Beauty of care is your audience being fully informed. All beacon marketing requires the use of a smartphone location services. It also requires the use of Bluetooth, which for most users, and this is what people need to, if, 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 if I couldn't preach anything else for the next year, is this. Most people have Bluetooth enabled. Just because you run across people that don't, most do because today's phones come with everything enabled and most people 
don't turn it off. Okay. Why? Because most of the technology today, the, the, the wrist phones and, and your car phone and all that stuff connects through Bluetooth. And the reason they've done that, they have literally trained us to leave Bluetooth on because of the technology that's coming down the pot. Regardless, retailers and Beacon must, users must provide clear opt-in instructions that give users the power to control Beacon messaging. For most stores or locations, that means making sure that a required opt-in procedure begins at the entrance or outside the venue. Give them a sneak peek and then ask them to opt-in. Welcome to ABC Retail. Opt-in now for valuable coupons, offers, and loyalties. Remember I just said you need a, a beacon outside the front door that's going to hit them as soon as they walk in? Hey, sign up. Now where are we at? Where are we at right now? We're in the marketing platform. Uh, we talked about analytics last week. You can look at the end of the video last week and set up your Google Analytics from that video. Analytics are very, very deep, and I recommend that you go into Google itself and uh, study analytics if, if you want to go in that deep. I use analytics for one reason. I want to see clicks and their movement throughout my app. That's what I want to see. But I, I, I set that up last week on last week's training. We're going to talk about analytics more as we get into the coupons and stuff, but we'll do that. Regardless, retailers and beacon users must provide clear opt-in. So, so when someone is walking into a store, let's say that you go out and you set up uh, a clothing store. And that clothing store has special offers that are only sent out through the marketing platform. So when they walk into the door, when they walk up to the door, they get their first notification. OK, that notification is an opt in page. So you can set up a specific opt in page that says, hey, join our list, you know, join our special coupons, get our special coupons on your phone, whatever your call to action is. And that can be the first thing that they see. Now, when they go in and they're looking at these uh, two hundred and twenty five dollar jeans and it says, hey, check your notifications. There's a sign there because you made a nice little cue card that you can put right there on that clothes rack. Hey, check your phone notifications for special offers. Ding, that just opened their mind. Hey, check your notifications. We may be able to get a sell on this. They go to their notifications because they didn't check them when they walked in the door. They go to their notification. They click on the notification. It goes to where? It goes to the Join Us page. They put in their name, their phone number, and they click, uh, they click Enter. Now they're in the marketing platform. Now that marketing platform does what? It sends them a special offer for whatever their current sale is. Does everybody follow me how this all fits together now? Is everybody starting to see how, how powerful these little dots can be? Now you're walking around the store and you go to the back of the store and oops, you get another notification and there's a little sign on this on the on the wall that says, hey. Check your notifications for special deals and you open it up and there, sure enough, there it is. And you're standing in front of a pair of shoes and you open that up and there's 20% off of those shoes. And you've got a nice picture of the shoes inside the app with a 20% coupon. And so now when they go up to the counter, they say, hey, I've got a 20% coupon and I, I can get $25 off of these pair of jeans and blah, 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 blah. Now you've set up an entire marketing array right in that store with multiple beacons. Now they walk across. Now maybe there's an area that uh, doesn't do very well. Maybe they've got an area in a store and I don't know how many of you have ever been in retail, but every square inch of that floor is worth money. Okay. Uh, when you go to Dallas, some places go by the square foot. When you go to Dallas to look at real estate for retail, they sell it by the square inch. Okay. It's worth that much money. So you go in and you set up, and you, they say, you know what? This corner of my store, people do not come over here. They will not walk over here. So what are you going to do? You're going to put a beacon up there that's transmitting all the way across that store. And it's going to send out of a notif notification that says, hey, we have a special deal. And so you bring up a little map. Okay. Now, you're, now your little beacon is sent out a page. And it's got a little map on it. And you put a little come here. And what do they do? They start going to that side of the store. There are millions of ways 
to use this opt-in process to sell, to, to allow your clients to sell things that they've never seen happen before. It's very, very, very powerful. So make sure that not only is their audience fully informed on what's going on in their store, but you have to make sure that your clients are fully informed on what's going on in that store. Regardless, retailers and Beacon users must provide clear opt-in instructions that give users the power to control Beacon messaging. Very, very, very important. Beacon deployment. Have you optimized your Beacon placements? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show some screenshots in just a moment of some floor plans so you kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about. Now that you've decided on the type and number of beacons you need, you need to place them for maximum effect, okay? For example, the area that hasn't a person hasn't walked on the carpet in two years and it still looks brand new, okay? Common beacon placements include store and venue entrances, high traffic walkways, behind specific displays, or even at checkout. Placement is all about meeting defined goals. I was on the phone last night with a restaurant owner. They wanted a beacon. And as I started talking to the restaurant owner, I said, you know what we need to do is we need to put one on your door facing as they walk in so that we can give them special offers. And then we're going to put another one on your counter. Okay, right on your counter so that when they walk up, because you have to walk up to their counter and order, they're going to get another notification. And then we're going to put another one on the back wall. It's a small area, not very big. We're going to put another one on the back wall that sends that that's a coupon notification. And then when they walk out the door, we're going to put another one that says, hey, thank you and come back. So there's going to be four or five different notifications going on in this restaurant. Now this lady only wanted one beacon, but when she realized the power that this can do for her store, it just started growing and growing and growing and growing. Cust your clients aren't worried about what it's going to cost. Their, their concern, is it going to make me money? If you can show them how you can increase their revenue without question. And listen, go online. There is study after study after study after study. I've posted a bunch of them in the groups. There's study after study after study of what Beacons will do for the increase of retail businesses. Cross marketing is your beacon campaign an isolated marketing initiative. Beacons do not have to be a closed loop product. What if we can take that beacon driven data and then retarget to those same customers later online after they left the stores. And this is what I'm talking about retargeting. Okay. You can take your retargeting pixels and your retargeting, um, um, <clears throat> man, code and you can put them in your apps. We have a special place. It doesn't go under the analytics side. And I'm going to show you this next week when we get into the app, it goes inside the app under where the pixels go. Okay. And not under Google analytics. Don't put it there. Or you'll freeze your app up by using custom analytics and attribution tracking through Google analytics. Someone asked about Google analytics a while ago, and you can do anything you want with Google analytics. Retailers can not only garner demographic information on their existing customers, but they can then track those same customers online and serve them targeted offers at their convenience through the creation of Facebook custom audiences. Very, very powerful. I mean, here you've got a, a group of people that are walking in your store. The beacons are targeting them to open your app. As soon as they open their app, they're, they're uh, being pixeled, okay? They're getting that cookie on their phone. And now every time that store's advertisement goes out through Facebook because they've been pixeled and you are targeting that custom audience, guess who's going to get those ads? So now you've created that closed loop system, okay, uh, where, where everything is happening and it, all, everything is coming back to that store. You're creating uh, retargeting. You're creating sales. You're taking them to places in the store to purchase. You're utilizing the entire store square footage so that they have a return on investment of everything in their store. There will always be the vocal critic or two who see the beacon movement as more hype than reality. And when you see estimates that beacons alone will influence over 400 billion 
dollars in retail sales in 2016, and that was last year. Uh, the 2017 numbers haven't come out yet. It's hard not to take those stats with a grain of salt. But what isn't in doubt is that a well-designed beacon messaging campaign that makes use of the top five best practices can improve your bottom line results with existing customers and with the ability to set up and launch a beacon campaign at most retail stores for less than $89 and have it set up in 24 hours. I, I, I wasn't going to ask it. I'm going to ask this question. I wasn't going to ask this question. Does everybody on the call, do they realize the power that you have in that little round circle? Do, do you realize the, the ability to build a truly a massive business with that B, with the mobile web app, with the marketing platform? I mean, those three things together, the, the entire loop. Now you can throw in the uh, custom Facebook and all the retargeting. Can everybody see the power of what's going on with this? You you can literally, I'm telling you, it, it, yeah, it's scary cool. <laughs> so that's a good way to put it. If you want to join those that are making a million, two million, five million, ten million, three, five million, if you will dive into this and, and, and really look at it and study it, and look at what you already have, the mobile web app and the marketing platform with the texting and all that put together where you actually create your own ecosystem, your, your, your own system, marketing system for these stores. It is going to be phenomenal, the amount of money that you're going to be making from, the, from these uh, customers. And, and it's very inexpensive, very, very, very inexpensive to do. I'm going to pull up real quick. And uh, I hope this is a, this is a store. Okay. And I'm, I'm, I've got to pull up something on my phone because I don't want to lose it here. Let me, uh, I, I want to be able to see you guys. If you'll notice in this store, they have one at the entrance as they walk in. They have one in the corner here, one right here, transmitting. One on this side, they've got three on this corner. So they're literally covering every square inch of this floor plan. There's no walls in here to keep them from uh, the signal not going through. Now this beacon right here is probably, it's gonna be, it'll be picked up over here maybe, but because of the way it's, it's structured, it's got, there's a couple barriers here that it would have to go around. So you wanna make sure that depending on the, the layout of your business, uh, you want to be able to, uh, I'm going to set up this slideshow. Hopefully this won't affect anything. Let me see here. I get this thing to work. Okay. <clears throat> the next slide, you can see here, kind of the same thing. Uh, a little bit of barrier right here, so they, so they, but they've got them all the way around, and they've got them set up for specific things. Okay, specific items, shoes, whatever, whatever it is here. They've got beacon set up. Uh, this is a backpack that's got a beacon on it. Okay, uh, this uh, system right here, the point of sale has a beacon, but it's this next one I want you to look at, and this is very important. You see the entranceway here? They've got a beacon up here on the, uh, on the stanchion. When you walk in, this is a closed area with the exception of this little place here. They've got a beacon. Now, what this is is a museum, obviously, okay? But they got a, the receptionist has a beacon, so she's getting a notification when she walks in. She's getting another, another notification when she's here. And now every single display 
has a notification. All right. Every single display. So as you're walking around and walking up to this, and this is where you're going to set this up for about 10 meters. Okay. But you want to make sure that any enclosed space or anything that has any barriers, that's going to have a beacon. And you're going to have to put beacons on the other side of the wall in order to make sure that you reach out to everything. Okay. Does everybody understand that? Placement is very, very, very important. Your, your deployment and, and your campaign setup is the most important thing that you're going to do. You got to make sure. Oops. When you're setting down and there's a couple of uh, the companies that have uh, set up apps that basically shows you every place you need a beacon. Now, the locate app with radius, another good reason to download that locate app. When you walk into a business, you want to make sure that wherever you're standing, you're connecting to a beacon. Sometimes restaurants have um, uh, party rooms. So you want to make sure you have a beacon in there that's transmitting about, hey, make sure you hold your parties here. Okay. And depending on what room you're in and what depending on what the setting is, you want to set up different notifications. You want to set up different pages to be able to uh, put that information out. All right. Everybody mind if we go just a few more minutes? Is that okay with everybody? Because I want to show you one more site. Let's see here. I'm not going to go real deep into this site, but this talks about point-based or grid-based systems. And I want to take this right here. I'm going to try to put it in the comment section so y'all can all pull it up. Okay, that's this page, okay? And I want you to go to the, to the blog.beaconstack.com ton of information here but this talks about deployment overall and what i want to do is i want to come down here and i'm going to talk about two different things point based or grid paste i want to talk about real quick what they are what is point based beacon deployment point based deployment is only used when you wish to engage with your customers at specific places or points instead of covering the entire space with beacon signals for the need of high resolution analytics or user path for that space for instance, if you want to send coupons to your customers only at the entrance of a store, you will use point-based beacon deployment there. So you will literally, as we were talking about a while ago, on the outside of the store, right above the header of the door, you want to make sure you place a beacon there. People walking into the store are going to get that first notification. Now, it can be a notification, as we were talking earlier, to sign up for your coupons. So now you've driven them where? Into the marketing platform. Now they're going to get their notification back from the marketing platform. Hey, uh, make sure you say yes. They're going to say yes. And they're going to get their coupon link. When they get their coupon link, they're going to open that up. and They're going to go directly to your coupon. Now on the inside of the store, you may want to place a beacon above the exit door. When they exit out the door, they get another thank you, be uh, another thank you, maybe a reminder to... Uh, uh, and I'm going to show you guys next week how you can put a reminder on the bottom of each coupon to, to put their put their app on their homepage. So we're going to put that link on below every single coupon. And with that way, they save the app. They're, they have that on their homepage. When they see that, what do they think? Oh, I got to go to Carrie's place and buy some jeans this week. They got great deals there. So you just keep that marketing loop wide open. Uh, how many beacons would you need for point-based? Point-based deployment requires lesser number of beacons than a grid-based deployment because it requires you to cover only specific points of interest instead of covering every point of a given location via multiple beacon signals. These specific points of interest can be exhibits in a museum, store shelves, entrances to a building, and so on. <clears throat> so if you plan to deploy beacons for three different use cases, welcome message at the entrance, discount coupon at a shelf, feedback form at the exit, <clears throat> within a store of 500 square feet, you could use up uh, use a minimum of 10 beacons in total. 
What do I keep in mind while placing the beacons? In a point-based deployment, you put a beacon exactly where you want to interact with a customer. So if they're only want to enter interaction in five different points in their store, entry, exit, point of sale counter, and a couple of sales shelves, then you would need five beacons. Okay. And it all depends on exactly what they want. You must survey the space location once and create a floor plan to avoid any confusion. This is a, this is work. Okay. There's work in this. But the work will pay off in great dividends and great returns. In this kind of deployment, the beacons are placed at a particular point of interest. The space for the interaction when a customer in a beacon is very specific. So it is essential for a beacon to trigger the side action on time in order to test an app for point-based deployment. Test with a single beacon first. You got to make sure the beacon is triggering an action that is assigned to it. I, I can't. I can't specify how important it is for you to test your beacons. Extremely important when you set up these campaigns. You do not want to go set up a campaign and get called from an angry client that says you put the jean sales over by the shoes and I didn't sell one pair of jeans because everybody was picking up the shoes. Okay. Make sure the time taken by the beacon to trigger the action what happens if you try to access the triggered content while leaving the range of a beacon? Is the beacon consistent in triggering the required action properly on different smartphones? Very important that you test all this stuff. Issue one, you need to get you need to get too close to a beacon to get an app to trigger an action. Solution, increase the transmit power. A beacon does not display the relevant content. Solution, since you tested the app and it worked, the problem must lie somewhere in the beacon that's supposed to trigger the content. Check, check for its battery level. Uh, check for things blocking the signal. Remember, these are, are lightweight transmitters. They're not going to go through brick walls that are full of metal. You know, you may get just a tiny signal, broken signal on the outside, but these are specific for the areas that they're in. Uh, your draft... Your app drains a lot of battery. Solution, check if more than seven of your deployed beacons are visible in your smart device at once. If yes, you need to dec decrease the transmit power. You don't, if you're, if you're doing uh, point-based deployment, you don't have to cover the entire floor. You don't want to set the power of these things to where they're covering 300 feet. They only need to cover maybe uh, 10 feet or 15 feet. So you want to tone it down. You, know, you want to bring that transmit power down. What is the ideal use for these beacons? Since engagement with your customers at a specific place or points, it's ideal for small to medium businesses. In case of larger spaces, it works best for notifications based on or relevant to specific points of interest. Okay. Now, I'm not going to go through grid. This is for bigger businesses, but I gave you the link. I want you to go in and look at this. Because you're mostly going to be dealing with, unless you're working with a big client, you're going to be dealing with point-based beacon deployment. Learn how to walk in there and visualize a place and sketch it out on a piece of paper and talk to your client. Okay, what sales are we going to have? What pages do we need to create? What do we need to do? Where do we need to place the beacons? Remember, the beacons don't need to be hid behind a big big piece of wood they need to be placed in in line of sight of the phone so if someone's walking up you don't want to hide that behind a metal rack because that's going to disperse the signal and it's going to make the signal weak you want to make sure it's uh somewhere between uh eight to nine feet okay if it's on a wall uh, you can put it right on the ceiling right above the place that's where the cell's going so just make sure you check all those things. But most importantly, make sure that you check that they're broadcasting properly and all of them are not broadcasting to the, at the same time throughout the entire store. They're, they're point-based deployment. So you want to make sure that if I'm within five feet or 10 feet of that area, I'm going to receive that notification. Okay. So, but blog, I'm going to put this in the group. I post this quite a few times, stories from here in the Facebook group.
Okay. So there you go. That's their blog. Got a, a lot of great stuff. I am talking to a guy at this company at Beacon Stacks to try to get him to come on board and do a webinar with me. Okay. They've got a great platform that tracks everything that has analytics built in. So it, it's a very, very good system. Any questions before we go? Next week, we're going to be into the platform. I'm going to start with UIDs. We're, we're going to spend about 20 minutes, maybe 25 minutes on UIDs. We're going to spend about 25 minutes in the, uh, what would be the minimum height for a beacon? Uh, I would say about five feet. Make sure, just make sure it's not obstructed. Make sure it's not, most people will carry what? Their phone in their hand. Uh, so maybe four feet off the floor. But the biggest thing, Rick, is you want to make sure it's not obstructed. Uh, for example, I've got two beacons in my office, and I can I can go out in the front of my home, and I pick up my beacons. It's going through four different walls, okay? But you can tell when I've got it inside that the that the uh, signal is greatly diminished, greatly diminished. Now, when I walk off my porch, I lose them. Now, if I put them on the porch, I'm out there at 100 feet. And I'm still picking them up. So make sure is, the obstruction is the biggest thing you want to watch. But line of sight of the phones, line of sight of the phones. If they're up high, you got a greater reach. Remember, because it's radius. You're, you're, you're broadcasting in a radius. Great question, though. Thank you for that. Any other questions? Anybody? I don't know about where you live, but it is hot in Texas. Very hot in Texas. Anybody else with any questions? I want to thank I, I want I want to thank you for two things tonight. Mostly, I want to thank you for for talking to me during the week. It allows me to do to, to put together trainings based on the things that you, you talk about. I picked up my beacon while it was closed up in my car with windows closed. I was inside a house when I saw that is awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it, uh, you know, I guess, I mean, atmospherics, there's all kind of stuff that affect it. But uh, that's killer. That's killer. I mean, that's metal, glass, you name it, going through the house and everything else. But I want to thank everybody for the questions and, and, and spending time with me during the week uh, after trainings and, and during the week on Facebook Messenger and talking to me and sharing with me your, 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 the good and the bad so that we can walk through those things and take care of those things and work those things out. Uh, the most important thing, and, and Woodrow will tell you the same thing, the most important thing to us is that you're successful and we give you the training that helps you to be successful. I can sit up here and talk all day, but if it doesn't do you any good, if you don't understand deployment and you don't understand that you need to put a beacon in line of sight of your phones and, and you don't understand that stuff and how, and how to, that you don't just go in and you're probably not just going to put one beacon. You're going to put one outside the door and inside the door, understanding that stuff. And I know some of you work other jobs plus this, uh, it's hard to study. And um, so I spend a lot of time studying. I want to make sure that you guys are up to date on what's going on. Uh, secondly, thanks for coming to training every week. For those of you that, that, that every single week you come to training and you take your time and you ask the questions and, and you're, you're successful. I can, I can tell everybody that watches the replay, some of our most successful resellers are live on training. So uh, some of you are watching from phones. Some of you are listening, driving down the road. But uh, I appreciate that more than you know, more than you know. All right, guys, I love you much. I will see you next Wednesday. Uh, I'm going to take a few hours in the morning and go out, get out of the house. I've not been out in a week. I would get out of the house and go get breakfast and uh, spend a little bit of uh, quality time before tomorrow afternoon and get back to work. But uh, thank you so much for coming out tonight. God bless you. And I will see you in next week's training. UID dashboard, Tom.
<laughs> I know he was asking about that in the group today. You're very welcome, Brenda. Absolutely, Rick. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, buddy. Good night, everybody. <laughs>